It is undisputed. French fries are a food staple of the world, with over 52% of restaurants having it on their menu. Now listen, I know I like to talk about how everything that you make at home can easily be better than anywhere you go and get it. But with French fries, it's different. That is the one dish most restaurants will do it better than someone at home. But why? What are the secrets that they're hiding from us? What goes into a restaurant quality French fry? The crunch, the fluffiness, the flavor, it's just this beautiful thing. And I've been chasing the perfect French fry recipe for years. But today is the day that all changes. I'll be testing all of the most known french fry techniques and determining the best one so that you can finally make the perfect restaurant quality french fries at home. This is the end all be all guide. Let's begin. We're starting this off as simply as possible. A single fry french fry. It's really just cutting the potatoes and frying them. That's kind of it. I don't expect it to be great, but it's part of the science, so hopefully it's decent. But it will set the baseline. So first you'll need to peel some russet potatoes. I would start with three if you're serving two to four people. Cut your potatoes into quarter inch planks, then into quarter inch sticks. So little french fry shape. Optionally, you can wash your cut potatoes in cold water. Pat your rinsed potatoes as dry as possible with a paper towel. Then fry in a six quart Dutch oven or heavy bottom pot filled a little over halfway up with vegetable oil that's been heated to 350 Fahrenheit or 176 Celsius. Once it's at temp, add your potatoes in two to three batches and fry until golden brown, stirring occasionally for about four to five minutes. Then use a spider to transfer them to a paper towel lined baking tray. And what do I always say? And for some reason, people don't listen to me. Season immediately to taste with salt. If you don't season them while they're hot, the salt doesn't stick. You go way, way, way in the comments. And I go, oh, I told you so. And you're like, oh, my God. Now, these fries are a lot more brown than the typical French fry that you'd receive. That's because we're frying them fresh. There's still a lot of sugar and starch on the surface. It hasn't had time to express it. So it browns more quickly than you might want it to, which I don't love. As soon as I popped them on the plate, they were, well, flaccid. And they stayed crispy for what, five seconds? I mean, look, they went softer than a, uh, yeah, you know what. Let's taste. That should not happen. A three, a two, and a two. Total score, seven. A low start, but not unexpected. I'll still eat this whole plate, but there isn't much crunch, there isn't much fluff, but the flavor is definitely there. Yeah, it's just super limp, but still has bite to it, which I don't understand. But other than that, the flavor's still great. I think a one wouldn't be fair because they do taste good, but they don't taste like French fries. It tastes more like a roasted potato. There's a little bit of sweetness still there somehow. Zero crunch. It's almost like negative crunch. This is like a boiled potato. And no fluff at all. It's super dense. Don't single fry your fries. You're better off baking them. Now we're just basically gonna double what we did last time by making a basic double fry. Same exact concept, except we're gonna do a low temperature par fry first. Again, large russet potatoes, peel, cut into quarter inch sticks, same as before. Optionally, you can wash your potatoes, pat them dry with a paper towel, and this time when they go in the fryer, you're gonna fry them at 320 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 Celsius for about three minutes. They should be pale in color. Drain on a paper towel, try to dab off that excess oil, raise your oil temperature to 350 Fahrenheit or 176 Celsius. Once it reaches temp, immediately add your fries back to the oil, stir in case and cook until golden brown, another 30 to 45 seconds. Remove, allow to drain for a few seconds, and then transfer to a large mixing bowl using a spider and season to salt while tossing frequently. So the second fry, they got color still very quickly, especially when they went into the hotter oil, which not really enough time to get a little bit of color. I don't know why I did that, I'm sorry. But I will say, they do seem a little crispier. Now let's find out how much more. <laughs> Didn't really fix that problem. A five, a three and a half, and a five. A tasting score of 13.5. I felt like these were right on the precipice of being crunchy, but there was something about that first fry and the second fry really drove up the flavor. This is the first one we've tried that like is starting to taste like a fry. It's crunchier than if you did a single fry, but I really like the airiness of it. I think that is a good texture. It's not like what you look for in a traditional fry, but I thought that was pretty interesting. And then flavor wise, I think it's a step above the last one. The exterior has like this this thin, thin, thin layer of crunch, but it's still dense. It didn't get the fluffiness I wanted. The flavor slightly improved in the direction of French fry, but I would not be happy if I got these from a restaurant. I've gone to restaurants and gotten fries like these yeah. and been pissed about them. Exactly. But I would still eat them. Yeah, but under that context, would you call them a five? Yeah. No way. Out of 10, I'd call them a five, yeah. No way, dude. Double fry, also double the score. Next up, we have battered fries. You see these a lot at bars, maybe, you know, a little ice house. But if there's one thing I know, brother, people love a good battered french fry. So we're gonna start the same again. Peel potatoes, quarter inch sticks, optionally wash them, and pat dry. This time, in a large mixing bowl, you're gonna add half a cup or 60 grams of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons or 30 grams of ancho powder, two tablespoons or 30 grams of smoked paprika, two teaspoons or eight grams of garlic powder, half a teaspoon or two grams of cayenne powder, two teaspoons or eight grams of salt, whisk that together, and then add one cup or 240 
milliliters of water and whisk until combined. That is your batter. Now look, you can change the spices to whatever your heart desires. This is a choose your own adventure, sweetheart. Maybe try using the spices I suggest first. Now, potatoes into the batter. Let the excess drip off and fry in the same size pot at 350 Fahrenheit or 176 Celsius for three to four minutes or until a deep golden brown. These things will get a little darker because of the spices and that's totally fine. Pull them out with a spider, let them drain for a few seconds and then transfer to a large mixing bowl and again, season to taste with salt immediately. By the way, quick note, whenever you season French fries with salt, please add more salt than you think you need. Now, obviously you could apply other techniques before battering and frying these, which would probably improve the fry, but really this is all about the batter and how much better it makes the fry, which we're about to find out. A six, a five, and a six. Total score, 17. These are obviously remarkably better than any of the previous fries. I'm like 50-50 on how I feel about it because on the exterior, you have this beautiful wispy crunch, big fan of it, but on the inside, you've got essentially a boiled potato. Like it is flaccid and you know it's flaccid. So I didn't pick up any actual crunch on the potato itself. The flavor's great, but again, the batter is leveraging it. So it's almost like a science lab French fry rather than just a potato. It's like green screen French fries. Like it's, they're fake. Oh my God. It's a fry. Like the crunch on these is a fallacy. Like you get through it and you're like, that's tight. But then you get to the potato and you're like, oh, this is just the single fried potato again. But it's more wispy than crunchy and it's still dense when you get into it. There's yeah. not really that fluffiness. You're still building off the past two fries. What we're good about that, the sweetness of that. And then you get new introduced flavors here with all the spices you can put into that. We're still not there yet on the perfect fry, but definitely builds. We're getting the crunch. We need the fluff. A clear leader, but are we surprised? Next up, we're using a steak fry as the example to show something I call the par cook then fry method. You can boil par cook or you can bake par cook. We're going with the bake route. So wrap as many russet potatoes as you'd like in aluminum foil, place in an oven at 350 Fahrenheit or 176 Celsius and bake for 40 to 60 minutes. Remove from the oven and place in the fridge overnight. The refrigeration step is crucial, okay? The cooked cooled starch is what makes the crunch. Once the potato is cold, cut it in half, then cut it in half again. Now you have quarters. Then cut each of those wedges in half once more and you should have wedges. Then from here, all you gotta do is pop those bad boys in 350 degree Fahrenheit or 176 Celsius oil and deep fry for three to four minutes or until a beautiful crisp golden brown steak fry emerges from the oil glistening ready to be cracked open Take them out, let them drain, add to a bowl, and immediately season and toss with salt. They look good. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not a huge fan of steak fries. It is what it is. But these are some of the better ones that we've made. That being said, I'm not so sure how well they're gonna rank. Let's find out. Three and a half, four, and a uh, seven. Whoa. Total tasting score, 14.5. Although this is good and I would eat this and I would be happy with it, this is nowhere near the perfect French fry, okay? The crunch is there, but there's way more baked potato on the inside than there is on the outside. There's more soft to crunch. Flavor's there. So it's good, but it's not the perfect fry. This looks a bit psychotic, but I kind of just ate the outsides for that exact reason. Very crisp on the edges, and I really like that. But the inside is too much like a baked potato. This was crispier than the single fry. It was crispier than the double fry fry. It got somewhat close to the battered, but the density of the inside is what really killed it. It's just a really good baked potato. Where does a seven come from then? I think that this is a better fry than the battered fry. Is that your highest rating? So far, yes. That's bonkers. So far, second place. Now we're entering goat territory. I don't mean like braised goat. I mean like G-O-A-T. This is hands down one of the most common and famous techniques of all time. It is the triple cooked French fry. So it should be the winner. At least I hope it is because I have a method for it in my cookbook. And I do think it's one of the best ways. But this isn't the last recipe for today. So we have our potatoes that have been peeled, cut into quarter inch matchsticks, rinsed, dried. And this time you're gonna place your potatoes in a six quart stock pot filled about halfway up with water, bring it to a boil over medium high heat, then add one teaspoon or four grams of baking soda, two tablespoons or 30 grams of white distilled vinegar and one and a quarter tablespoon or 18 grams of kosher salt. Add your fries to the boiling water solution and quickly boil for 30 to 45 seconds. You do not want these cooked all the way through. It's a par, par, par cook. They're still gonna be raw. This is just helping create a crust. So remove, dabbing dry with more paper towels. Then you're gonna take your parboiled fries and par fry them in 320 degree Fahrenheit or 106 degrees Celsius oil. This is step two for the crust. And you're gonna cook those for two to three minutes or just until pale in color and matte. They should look like this. Creating a little chemical reaction there brother with the boiling water solution, little par fry. And again, your fries at this point should be just about cooked through. Remove, drain on a paper towel, and transfer to a parchment lined baking sheet and place in the freezer overnight until frozen solid. That is a minimum of three to four hours, but ideally overnight. Josh, that's such a small bit of French 
guys, that's all I'm gonna get. Listen, to reduce food waste, we are only doing a small amount for testing here. Obviously, you can make more. Now, when it's fry time, you need to understand you are frying these potatoes from frozen. Do not let them come to room temperature. They need to be frozen solid when they go into that oil. So get your six quart Dutch oven with fry oil in it. Crank that heat up to 350 Fahrenheit or 176 Celsius. Lower in your frozen fries and fry for two to four minutes or until a stunning golden, almost McDonald's looking French fry announces itself from the oil as you slowly lift up a shimmering, beautiful obelisk of potato. Transfer to a large mixing bowl, season to taste with salt, and hopefully these are the best french fries we have today. Let's taste. That's crazy. Notice that this is the only fry that when we've gone to grab them, we grab more than one. A big eight, another eight, and an 8.5. A total tasting score of 24.5. That's gonna be damn near impossible to beat, but we have one more contender. People will be like, oh, it's like the best one there and it's only an eight? Grow a backbone. You can't rate every good thing that goes into your mouth a nine or a 10, because one day you'll realize there are not many things that deserve a nine or a 10 in life. This French fry has the crunch that I was looking for I know mentally that probably it could be a little crunchier. That's just me being really anal, but this is a good fry. No one's gonna complain about this. There's nothing there, as you can see. Flavor is everything that I want out of it. It just tastes like a French fry. And fluffiness is exactly where we want it to be. So it gets an eight, which is extremely high for me. Crunch is a huge step up from the last couple we've been having. The fluffiness was the big change here. We finally had one that wasn't so dense and it's balanced on all ends. The crunch, the fluffiness, the flavor. And that's why it gets a solid eight for me. The flavor was unreal. The bite to the fries was on the outside, not the inside, which is what you want. This is the best fry that we've had today. Could be our winner, but we have one more left. The brined fry. This is quite literally the most untraditional version of French fries I think I have ever seen. We're not triple frying, we're not freezing, we're not cooling them down. We're literally just gonna fry them twice back to back, which is the exact same method that we did earlier in this video, which was quite literally one of the lowest rated recipes. The only difference is a simple brine. So again, start with the same potato that we've made every single time. I'm not saying it again, you know what they are. So you can use any size jar you want. We used a quart size, but it's all dependent on how many potatoes you do. The more potatoes, the bigger the jar. Here's how you calculate your brine. It's gonna be a two to 5% brine. Five is very much on the high end, 2% is recommended. So if you wanna be around in the middle, a hypothetical scenario would be 30 to 35 grams of salt and about 750 grams of water. That's roughly three and a half to 4% brine. Stir together to dissolve, add a clove of crushed garlic, a quarter teaspoon or one gram of mustard seeds and a half teaspoon or two grams of black peppercorn. Add your potatoes to a jar. Now make sure those are completely submerged in the water. If they're not, you may need to add a small layer of plastic wrap or something to weigh them down. So make sure not to weigh them down with metal. Choose plastic or glass. Then you're gonna let those brine for three to five days. Then you'll pull them out. They're a little cloudy, a little funky. Make sure there's no mold on top. Ideally, there shouldn't be. But if there is, you might need to restart. Now drain your fries, dry with paper towels, and now our first fry, which will be fried at 320 Fahrenheit or 160 Celsius until the fries are just about cooked through, pale, and relatively matte in color. The first thing I noticed is little air bubbles here. Now drain on a paper towel, raise the oil to 350 Fahrenheit or 176 Celsius and fry once more until a lovely deep golden and crispy. Something special is going on here because I removed from the oil, allowed to drain, tossed into a bowl. I heard something a little different than I had heard before. Seasoned generously to taste with salt and already I feel like these fries are the most different looking, the most different sounding. Something about these are special, even though it was less steps. So let's taste. It's a lot less complicated than the typical triple fry and all the stuff you gotta do to it. What I really liked about this is the flavor is deeper than any other fry we've had today. The crunch was there. The one thing I didn't like, these were kind of chewy. The flavor's there. You can tell due to the fact they've been brined that the salt really penetrated the entire potato. The chewiness is slightly off-putting. Now let's rank. An eight, an eight and a half, bare minimum. In order for this to win, it needs an eight and a half or higher. So it's up to Cam. Coming in at, at exactly an 8.5, the total score of 25, our winner, the brined fries. Triple cooked in second place with 24.5, only 0.5 off of our first place winner and battered fries in third, but who cares about third? We made these in another video where we tested viral TikTok food hacks and we were blown away by it and it did it yet again. The first time we made them, they were remarkably better than this. So the fact that they still get an 8.5 is high praise. It's a choose your own adventure between these two. You know what to do. And if you want to find the recipe, the link will be in the description. It's always in the description. We have a website full of recipes that are just for you. So click that link if you want to make it yourself. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not already. I love you, goodbye.